Hello there. So uh, I'm going to show you how to use one of the blocks within our tool builder, what we call the processing block. Uh, one of our users asked about it. This block will allow you to make kind of more powerful tools uh, using AI. It's a no code builder, but this block kind of gives you some of the abilities that normally you would need to write code to do. And so it kind of opens up the door for more sophisticated tools. It's a block we use a lot when we're making story writers and, and things like that. Because the story writer needs to go in a loop and it needs to keep adding more and more text, write each chapter out to get like a 60,000 word book. So that's just an example of what you can do yeah, with the help of processing blocks. Um, so on the side, Skill Fusion AI, and to get to our no code tool builder, you just click Toolmaker. Um, it's free to use, it runs on credits, but you get free credits when you sign up. Um, it should be enough to make most tools. But yeah, so you add the block. The block is called the processing block. Um, I'm just going to add a, a user question first, just so I can uh, give the block something to process. So normally uh, you'd ask the user a question or you'd ask the AI to generate something. What are your current walls? I'll just do cat, sorry, text area. <laughs> cat, dog, mouse suit, and one pair line there. All we can do, we're going to get our block now, the processing block. And we've got a bunch of options here. First, what are we going to process? So we're going to process that first block, block zero, which in this case, the user's added cat, dog, mouse. And um, what we can do, it's a, we've done one per line there, so we can say separate it by line. What that will do is that separates that into three different answers. And um, if you've done any coding or development before, you'll see that's basically an array or a list, as you would call it. And it's essentially we've built a list. And now anything that we apply this to will basically run on each item in the list. So if I say it's the AI, describe, oops, this animal, and it's block and book. You can give the blocks names and stuff as well. You don't have to call them. <laughs> you have to remember block one and what will happen is it'll actually run three prompts so it'll send each one to the send two at a time that's why it says two <laughs> yeah. but yeah it'll run each one separately and it'll give you three responses so it kind of maintains that it's in a list you get three items back and um, so there's the first one the cat and there's the second one the dog and there's the third one the mouse uh, i could then break each of them down into three favorite lists if i wanted to so i could say give me a numbered list for example i would, I would share but give me a numbered list with the three benefits of owning this animal you know, cat dog mouse and what will happen is i'll have three lists of three so number nine and so on and so on so you can get really complicated output if you do want to then roll that back into if you like if you were working on a book so you might split it into 12 chapters you might then split each chapter into a, a template plan for the chapter so you end up with 12 lists of 10 and um, you then use a reducing block to put all that back together into one single item. So reducing block. Block two. And how do you want to do it? Usually just a new line. And um, puts all that back into one long piece of content. And then now if I put anything on the output of this block three, it's just one item again now. So yeah, sometimes you'll need to do that. And yes, there's one example. So we'll process it. So you would typically you'd say to um, the AI, you know, give me a numbered list of whatever, 20 ideas for social media posts. And then you may want to split them up then. So it'll always give you a numbered list if you ask it to. <laughs> One, two, three. And then you would just use, you'd basically just tell it separate using numbers, numbered output to actual list. And then I'll give you a one, two, three. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's a separated one. So the output, you separate the list is the output of one. Essentially, it doesn't change this. So this is still one whole list which you may need to use as well within your prompts so you might say here's the 12 chapters for the book currently you're working on this one and chapter four or whatever that's that'd be like for like a non-fiction book where the, the story doesn't need to follow essentially it's kind of writing the whole book all the chapters at once when you split it up like this and um, there's other separators here, as you can see so lines of text paragraphs and commas so you, you, you may just have a comma separated list and sometimes spreadsheets can be exported like that then if the user's pasting in a large amount of text that you want to process then these are quite good so 400 words or 800 words and the ai tends to output about 500 words so it's if you're doing some kind of task like a translation task for example 
he wanted the user to be able to paste in a whole book and then it would take it 400 words at a time and translate it and then yeah give you 400 new words back so you had to only use that so you'd say it's split it by 400 at a time and then you'd say translate this into russian or whatever and test it do do and it's going to do each one and then one two three <laughs> your three animal names and then you'd put them back together again yeah and then you've, you've potentially made a tool there that will you know, translate whole books into whatever language you want or whatever you want to do um, and then last two a custom one so if you've advised the user you know to import something and to use a certain separator for example someone made a tool and they asked the user just to put four dashes between each chapter there was a a tool that reviewed each chapter for the user and gave them feedback on the book and things like that so yeah you can use your own custom separator um, and if you know regex you can use that as well um, so you put in your so that's kind of more it gives you more control so more complicated separators yep so the original item this block stays intact the output is on this one okay and now this other option we have here modify references does the opposite of change, by the way now modify references does change the original block instead so we can, this is more like if you needed a variable instead so we'd have um, instead of a use the question we may just have an info block instead which we use for storing text we'll say store the number one there and give it a name so stage and then what i can say is current stage increase by one what's going to happen is that becomes the number two so again, if you were making a more complicated tool, it's a bit like development work. You, yeah, you just you keep increasing it. So wait, like if you were writing the 20 social media posts, you'd say, you know, write post number one, write post number two, um, and so on and so on. So you just keep increasing that as you go through the list and you you might need something at the end to set it back to one again. Uh, so yeah, increase, decrease, append. So you, if you're getting the AI to produce a large amount of text, you might need to keep appending it. So you, that's how you're able to produce how we're able to produce quite long documents that you can't normally get from ChatGPT unless you might continue 200 times to do a whole book clear and then this is like a trim things the first so many characters or the last so many characters if you need to give it some of it this is the, that's this is kind of like a trim as well but it actually retains the text as well so what would happen is if i had a, a long document so 10,000 words this will remove the first 400 words from the document and um, but then the output for this block would be those 400 words if that makes sense so you just grab the first 400 words you can do something with them and it deletes it from the original block and then you grab the next 400 so again if you do, it could use it for translation as well and stuff like that but any kind of task that you need to do on a large document where you need to grab like a few words at a time it usually does to the nearest paragraph some of these but yeah and same with this so it's, it's like a regex version so you would do whatever regex you set it, it would grab that remove it from the original and then yeah do your thing with it you process and, and then you come back and then do the next 400 or whatever and for a lot of these to actually create a loop with one of these we have like an if statement type block as well so again very similar to development so that's why we're able to make physical tools if you can kind of get your head around it so it's yeah, if, if the current chapter, which was in this current stage. Current stage does not equal 20. And then we would go back to you know, this one, which was incremented by one. We say go back to block two, basically. Otherwise, you, know, you carry on with your journey on block six, and that, that that would create a loop essentially with this tool. So they would go back to block number two, increase the current stage by one, and then follow whatever blocks you've got underneath that, um, and then keep doing that until you get to 20. So that's how you'd write 20 social media posts or whatever you want to do. You know, whatever, it, it, it can be anything, it doesn't have to be anything to do with marketing or social media, you know, and literally any tool you want to make. Um, you need to go in some kind of loop or you need to use some kind of variables to keep amending the output that's what you'd use the process and block for yeah i hope that makes sense just to recap 
uh, what is it? So process and output will process it, but it doesn't affect the original basically. So just grabbing text from it or separating the text into a list. So well, yeah, and then again, whenever you separate it, you are, you have a list to work with then. You can kind of do as many dimensions as you want, like I said before. So, you know, 12 chapters, 10 points in each chapter, and then you could split that even more for three, three sub points for each point and so on. Um, and that's how you get very, very long detailed content. Um, planning like a non-fiction book like that is a way of kind of avoiding repetition within the book. So a lot of the people use ChatGPT directly to try and write a book. Yeah, it ends up just giving them the same thing over and over again because its memory isn't very long. But with this, you could plan the, the kind of the non-fiction book out in massive detail. Or not necessarily book, whatever it is. So you might be working on, it could be anything, you know, a, a HR handbook for a company or any anything really. But yeah, that's, so that's that. And then the, the modify references yeah, changes the original. So again, if you were using these, using like an info block or whatever, it's kind of a variable. You can just keep adding more and more text to it and then by the end that block would be your finished documents whatever you're trying to get your tool to produce um, so yeah i hope that wasn't too technical best way is to just practice with it try it or let us know if you have a question and um, but yeah hopefully that will help you make more sophisticated tools and um, we've got other block types as well of course so that's probably the harder one, one of the harder ones to use but prompts talk to the ai user questions you know, get the input from the user which you need in every tool Info block as it just stores text, which you can then operate on you know, with the process and block or refer back to it later. Um, yeah, reduce and block, but it back down to you know, one dimension, one object afterwards. Image block, draws images. Download block, yeah, let, creates a download that the user can use. Zapier, uh, if you want the user to have the option to export it to their own Zapier accounts. So like if it's writing an email yeah, for them, you can give them the option to export it straight into their gmail because uh, whatever zapier's got like common number is five thousand connections to other apps and stuff like that and writing something in html you can or again the ai too you can preview it embeddings is kind of store and retrieve knowledge so yeah there's a lot of people trying to do stuff with that now you make make the app more use. it's kind of like training the ai in a way but it's not permanently within the ai it just Use the but it's like a search block where you search and pull the information that you need at any given point in time. So you'd ask the user question, what's your favorite color? And then you might have in the embeddings block what that says about the person, for example. And then you would do the search. And then if they do a color that's not in there because it's embeddings, it's quite clever semantic search, it would find the nearest color instead of the exact color. Yeah, but usually only worth using it if you've got hundreds of examples at least to put in otherwise you can just store the information within the prompt itself and just say if the user said that to do this um, yeah, if else block so control and the flow a scraper block will scrape a website to pull the information from different websites google search does the google search to find the websites <laughs> and get up-to-date information and text-to-speech will like create audio files as well and we're adding new blocks and stuff as we go so yeah open to just I keep adding blocks so add, which each block kind of increases the number of capabilities quite a lot so obviously any book writer could also make it into an audio book and, you know, and they can draw images for the cover uh, oh yeah so there's lots of other tools as well you can make hopefully using combinations of these but yeah hope you find that useful